Hello everyone, welcome to Europe. <clears throat> I have some new signs to welcome you now <clears throat> in our My World and I Travels. Hello, room 171, welcome to the travel. I have images here of the two hemispheres of the globe. Bienvenue is what people say who speak French and are from Europe. <clears throat> Hello, travelers from room 104. On this side of the message, I have a, a graphic with lots of famous buildings and structures from Europe. Because you know I always like to talk about buildings and structures. Bienvenidos. People who speak Spanish use that word to welcome people. Hello to room 102 travelers. Some of the symbols here are ones that will be in your new passport. Welkommen is what people who speak Netherlands or Dutch. <clears throat> Hello, room 103. I love buildings and structures. I had to have that graphic. Cheers. Hello. <clears throat> People who are from the United Kingdom might greet you that way. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <clears throat> I am fortunate that I have traveled to Europe many times. <clears throat> I have not been to South America or to Africa yet. So, <clears throat> my travel is with you on those trips because I have not been to that continent. But to the continent of Europe, I have been fortunate to have traveled to several times. At the front of our passport, it says, I can travel the world. And then I found another graphic of important buildings and structures from Europe in a line. And then there's a, a little bit faded image of the European Union flag. If you see it for real, it's dark blue with the ring or circle of gold stars representing each nation from that continent. <laughs> the nations are separate and function independently, but then they also work together in a union. Think of the parallel. The United States, the states all function by themselves, but they work together in the United States of America. In the European Union, they are nations that work together in the European Union. I created this passport for you with the idea of something that would be easy to look at. Do take the time to look through the pages. I'll show you the page that I'm going to work on, and then in the video after this, Mr. Silverman will work on a page. I'm going to work on this page, page number one inside. <clears throat> I found it's so interesting to search for graphics when I'm making these books. This is a graphic of the shape of the continent, but it has pictures of people from the nations of that continent, exactly where those different nations are. And then this, I'm fascinated by flags. Vexillology, 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 is the study of flags. I wish this was in color. Maybe I should send it to your teachers so they could send it to you. <clears throat> Flags have lots of geometry on them. And we just studied geometry and math recently. Lots and lots of flags, geometry, shapes. Lots of rectangles, stripes, triangles. I hope you have a chance to look at that. Page two is about three buildings, important and famous buildings in Europe. Mr. Silberman. My teacher friend will teach about page two. Of course, Mr. Jones, he loves his maps. He will work with you on page three and page four. Ms. Confer, she likes to teach about animals of the continent, and she will teach you things from this page, page five. And Ms. Sorensen, who teaches about art from the continent, has a project. And this page, page six, gives you some images, buildings at the top, and famous art pieces at the bottom. And then the back, I always leave empty, so you can do something extra on there, like um, draw something or write something about the continent. Now to get ready for today, uh, I so wish we were in the building because I have well, you might have heard, I like stuff, and I have a lot of stuff. 
from different places and different types of things in my collection of stuff. And I have a lot of things from Europe. I wish you could see them. I am wearing two things. An Irish cap and an Irish knitted sweater from the Aran Islands in Ireland. My family, deeply back in generations, is from Ireland <clears throat> and England. I married into a family who is from Germany and France. So the languages around me, and growing up, people used to talk like this. They had what's called an Irish brogue, and relatives in my family would talk like this when they were talking to us. And they'd give us directions, and they'd give us hugs and love, but their voices sounded like this. So I grew up in an environment that had voices that sounded like this, and voices that sounded like this when they were talking to each other all the time. The Irish, that Irish accent called a brogue. So I'm wearing this cap and this sweater, greenish and black, in honor of my family history. I do travel to Europe frequently because of my family there and because of my interest in that continent. <clears throat> and whenever I'm there, I'm a shopper. So I am looking for things that I find interesting and that I might want to have back in my home to help me remember my trips. I have hundreds of postcards that I've collected, clothing, souvenirs, books, coins, stamps, toys, scarves. Oh, I should show you my scarf collection sometime. Yes. I recently only traveled to Scotland and I, I bought over 20 scarves. I gave lots away to family and friends who were not with me, but I wanted to enjoy the trip through my gift and I kept a bunch for myself. When I traveled to Spain, I bought these fans. Fans are used by people in Spain. Sometimes in the United States, it seems like you just see women with fans, but not in Spain. In Spain, the men have these fans as well. To just keep a little bit cooler in very hot temperatures, like when we were there in the summertime. This is some of my collection. I went into a store and there's a whole department of just fans. Like in, in Seattle, you might just find a, a, a department of plumbing supplies. Here, there were just fans. I was going crazy buying them, looking, and then I bought about 12 or 15 of them. I did give a bunch away to our moms and, our, and, and, and friends who were not with us, but I did keep a bunch that I do like to have. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, okay, another day I definitely need to get you some stuff. I'm going to fix my camera here a little bit there. So it seems to be rolling and floating. Like it's running away from me. Okay, let's take a look at this first page here. I can travel the world. You can see three kindergarten words already, right? With your red marker, would you underline those three words that you know? Our kindergarten words, I, can, the. And of course, purple punctuation. I thought that would be a good sentence to have at the top of each of our passports. And then I do like to look for things like buildings and structure images and the flag. Too bad we don't have a color printer because I think you would really like to see that. But what you can do to help remind you about that thinking about geometry. I'm looking at this flag at the bottom. And I just did the outline or perimeter of that shape in blue. If you'd like to, at some point later on, you could color the flags yellow. Can you kind of see that there a little bit? Kind of. And then you could color around it blue if you wanted to, to help you remember the European flag. Now on this page, <clears throat> at the top, people, hmm, flags of Europe. People, flags. There's a kindergarten word missing in that sentence. You can probably figure out. Three letter word, starts with an A. People, Mm, flags of Europe. 
hippo. Oh yeah, see, I heard you say that. And a n d people and flags of Europe. Underlining that with red is helpful to show people you know kindergarten words. And then a purple punctuation at the end of that is helpful too. Not too big. It's not supposed to be a ball or a lollipop, just a small circle. People and flags of Europe. Thank you. Now what I wanted to do, I have I have two books. Well, I have hundreds of books. I think I have more than 2,000. I have two books that I was looking at as possibilities to read to you. This one is called Europe. Great name for a continent. And this is called Europe. A great name for a continent. And so I was looking at them and trying to decide which one to look at for today. I'm going to read you this one. Books in the library. Miss Alaverti has a great collection of books from the world that she has purchased for the kindergarten students because of our travel around the continents around the world. Do feel free to check when you browse to look for books about the continents. There's fairy tales. She has map books, nonfiction books like these, and others. Okay, I'm going to move the camera and then show this book. Maybe I can hold it just up, it might be easier. Okay, let me try that. This is called Europe. I like this book because it gives what's called an overview. It tells you important things about the continent to know. The book is by Mike Graff. And you can see right here, there's a graphic picture of the continent and they color the continent of Europe red. Europe is the second smallest, or what's called the sixth largest. The continent that's smaller than Europe is Oceania. We study that around May. Um, North America, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia, Oceania, right, around May is when we do that one. Uh, um, Europe is the second smallest continent, or the sixth largest, depending on what they're thinking and how their um, sizeness matters. Okay, <clears throat> it's a nonfiction book. There's a table of contents with these chapters. And already right here, it's, it says right here, facts, fast facts about Europe. It lists the countries in Europe here, and then it shows you the countries here, different colors. Of course, you are cartographers, which means a map studier and map maker and map worker. So you know the real world doesn't have continents that are differently colored, but they're shown to be different colors, so you can see the difference between them, even though they're all sharing the land in Europe. Okay, I'm going to move this over and then hold it over the book. I think it will be easier to see this way. Okay, so here is the size of Europe compared to the United States in this part. They put the map of the Europe on top of the United States so you can see the comparison. Okay, right here. Europe is the sixth largest continent. The Atlantic Ocean is west of Europe. Asia lies to the east. The Mediterranean Sea and Africa are south of Europe, and the Arctic Ocean is north of Europe. We just got some good geographic information. That would be helpful when you walk, talk and work with Mr. Jones. Europe's land. Europe has many mountain ranges. The Alps spread across several European countries. The Carpathian Mountains are in Eastern Europe. The Pyrenees Mountains are in Southern Europe. They separate France and Spain. So the mountains are drawn with brown. Mr. Jones will appreciate you knowing that. Northern Europe. The climate is cold in far Northern Europe. In winter, the sun shines for only a few hours each day. In summer, the sun never sets. That means there's a little bit of sunlight all summer long. Many people catch fish off northern Europe's coasts. Iceland 
is an island in northern Europe. It has both volcanoes and large glaciers. That's a country I hope to visit someday. Central Europe. <clears throat> Germany and the Netherlands, the Netherlands in Deutschland, are countries in Central Europe. Germany is one of Europe's most important makers of cars. I can speak a little bit of German. Rotterdam, Netherlands, is a port city on the Rhine River in Central Europe. The port ships more cargo than any other port in the world. And a port is a place where ships can load and unload what's called goods, which means things. Eastern Europe has many natural resources. People in Poland and Ukraine make steel from the coal and iron ore found there. And steel can be used in cars and buildings and many other things. Some people in Eastern Europe farm without machines. Farmers use instead horses and oxen. Western Europe. France, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom are in Western Europe. Vineyards grow in France and Switzerland. People make wine from grapes grown in vineyards. Western Europe countries. London, England is the largest city in the United Kingdom. About 7 million people live there. Seattle has about a little bit more than half a million people in its um, city limits. Southern Europe. Italy, Greece, and Spain are countries in Southern Europe. Many tourists travel to these countries. They enjoy the warm climate there. France, Italy, and Greece. Venice, Italy is built on islands in a lagoon. People travel through the city in boats called gondolas. They can walk across bridges between these many, many tiny islands, but gondolas are like a taxi service. And the, the um, gondolas carry people and um, goods throughout the city. Europe's animals. Oh, Ms. Ms. Confer will love this part of the book. Europe's forests, mountains, and waters are home to many animals. Swans and ducks nest near lakes and ponds. Bears, wolves, and foxes make their homes in forests. Falcons and eagles nest high in the mountains. And here's a map page. And here is called a glossary. Words to help you understand what might be new words in a book. This series of books called Continents, I believe Miss um, uh, Teachers have a set, and I believe Miss Alaverti bought a set of these, one book for each of these continents. Europe. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for visiting Europe. I hope you enjoy your stay and have a great time traveling throughout the continent with your teachers in our trip to Europe, my world and I. Thanks for your time and attention today. Adios, tschüss, cheers, bye now.